Chris Massey, and welcome to the Chris Massey Show here on the American Hearts Radio Network. Welcome to our special Christmas show. This is the last show of season one. This is show number 16, Al. Can you believe that? 16 shows, and, uh, you know, the network told me they wanted me to wear a Santa hat, and when I got here tonight, they already had it here for me, and, uh, look, this is what they gave me. You know, I, I think this is supposed to be leopard skin. But it, it really it feels like they shaved a St. Bernard's ass and just kind of glued it on here. Well, anyway, that red paint. that's right. That's <laughs> right. So, well, last week on the show, I made some comments about the Virgin Mary and Christmas that got the religious right all up in an uproar again. I have to tell you, you guys say you hate me, but you sure do watch the show a lot. And I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, Betty from Hoover, Alabama, writes in again. Betty says this, Chris. How dare you insinuate that the story of the Virgin Mary may not be true? The Virgin Mary giving birth to Jesus in the manger is the cornerstone of the Christian religion. Well, Betty, I didn't insinuate that the story wasn't true. What I said was is that the story is complicated. And I'm sorry, any time you have a woman giving birth to a baby who has not had sex, it's complicated, okay? But since you're calling me out, I'm going to call you out, Betty. The book we're talking about has a story in there about a cat named Noah. Now, he built this ark out of mud and wood and, and straw, and he was able to get two of every type of animal on earth inside the ark. The only problem is this thing would have had to have been the size of an aircraft carrier. Technology to build an aircraft carrier wasn't available until the 20th century. Not to mention that, somebody's got to be on this thing shoveling shit off the side of it 24 hours a day. What Am I you, right about that? What the lines eat? So listen, Betty, I don't care if you do get mad. Hell, I don't even give a damn if you ever watch the show again. So you can ho, ho, ho that in your pipe and smoke it. How's that for a Christmas spirit? That's right. Now, Betty, I know you're like a lot of people in this country. You wake up on Sunday morning and you start your day by tuning in to good old John Hagee. Now, for those of you that don't know who John Hagee is, he's the minister of the San Antonio Cornerstone Church. And you want to know who he is? He's the king of the idiots. That's who he is. On his last sermon, he was telling the people in his congregation they need to boycott the stores that say Happy Holidays and only shop at the stores that say Merry Christmas, which I can understand. Because look, man, we can't have the Muslims, the Hindus, the atheists, the Jews, the agnostics having a good time during the holiday season. By God, Christmas is for the Christians and the Christians only. And we all need to bend over backwards to make sure these people have a good time. I mean, after all, this country was founded by good Christian people. They believed in the Virgin Mary. They believed in God. They believed in Jesus Christ and slavery. <laughs> That's right. You can't ever give me the reason for that one, can you? All right. Now, Mr. Hagee has also been known to say things like all gay people are going to go to hell, like he's been there and seen it himself. He also has a sermon on YouTube called, Is Barack Obama the Antichrist? I mean, really, do you have to say anything else? You know, Mr. Hagee, I think that if, uh, I'm going to apologize to you for calling you king of the idiots. The real idiots are the people that come to your church every Sunday and put money in the offering plate. Over the years, they've made you a very rich man. You have a net worth now of $5 million. But I got to tell you, I think if Jesus came to your church, he wouldn't be very impressed that you are worth $5 million. In fact, the kind of people Jesus hung out with, you guys wouldn't even let through the door on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, I know, you're out to save sinners, but let's face it, you want the kind of sinners that dress nice, smell good, and can put money in the offering plate. So from everybody here at the Chris Massey Show, we've got a big message for everybody at the Cornerstone Church in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and especially you, Pastor Hagee. Happy holidays! All right, we got a great show tonight. Al Burroughs is going to be here. My good friend Jimmy James and an episode of the Hippy Dippy Classic Album Review with Leon Smoker and Rachel Jordan. So grab your beer and relax. Stick around. We're going to have a good time tonight. We'll be right back. Scottdale Metal Products, your family-owned and operated gutter supply house since 1971. Wholesale prices are available to the public and we offer worldwide shipping. See our full catalog, 
gutters and coil, downspout, elbows, end caps and miters, outlets, debris protection, hangers K style, hangers half round, and many other accessories. Look us up on the web at scottdalemetal.net. That's scottdalemetal.net. Give us a call at 770-922-1330. That's 770-922-1330. Scottdale Metal Products, Incorporated, 1520 Parker Road, Southeast, Conyers, Georgia, 30094. Scottdale Metal Products is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on AmericanHorseRadio.com. We're back, we're back. Man, I'm in such a great mood. It's a great, you know, Christmas is just right around the corner, and I am just so happy about it. I can hardly stand it. Now, my first guest tonight is the guy that's been uh, my engineer on this show for all 16 episodes. He's a very vital part to the American Hearts Radio Network. He's also a musician and been in the entertainment business for a long time. Currently, he runs sound for the SOS Band. Would you please welcome to the Chris Massey Show, Mr. Al Burroughs. Big Al. What's up, Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now see, every, uh, I talk to Al all the time on the show and nobody ever gets to see him, you know, they think that, uh, you know, they probably thought you were a small Japanese guy over there, like I said on the show last time. That's right. I left my, don't in mind. <laughs> now, Al, um, you know, I didn't, uh, well, first of all, first of all, before you get started, okay. let me say, I've been doing shows for eight, maybe nine years. Okay. Out of all that time, mm -hmm. you are the very first one to actually interview me on the air. Wow. And I've done a lot of shows. So thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Well, you know the network called me and told me. I <laughs> <laughs> hey, he called you and said, if you don't have him on the air. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I plan, plan to do it all along. So now, Al, um, oh, give me a little bit about your, your background in music and, uh, oh, and, and stuff, man. Okay, all right. Well, you know, I'm... Um, I started out playing guitar. Okay. Uh, my actually, I had a drum kit, one of the little paper drum kits. Right. And there was six kids in one bedroom. I think that thing lasted two days, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> before I came home and there was a hole in the bass drum. Right. So drums weren't going to work, but my brother had a guitar and he didn't play it. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up and I started playing it and got a paper route, paid for my own get my own guitar and amp and all that. You know the routine. Sure. You know, and yeah. then you get your career going. Well I sold um, pot to buy my first guitar. Anyway, go <laughs> See, ahead. See there you go. <laughs> go Self sufficiency, you know? <laughs> so I um so uh I I'll never forget I wanted to write songs. And I'll never forget my first time writing a song. I had two now I don't know if you remember this back in the day, I had two cassette players. Yes. And I played my guitar. No, I I'm sorry, I would play the drums, I turn turn the cassette player and record, play the drum part. Right. Then I take the, that and play it, and then play the bass part and record it on the other guitar. I mean, on the other tape player, cassettes. That's right. And then I bounce back and forth, and every time I bounce back, now this is just coming from speaker to microphone, speaker to microphone. Right. Anyway. Right. And that was that was the beginning of my that's song. That's pretty ingenious. Said. Hey man, I had to have it, man. I had yeah. no money, so yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 14, 15 years old. Had nothing to lose. So anyway. Mm -hmm. um, at, I, I was hit by a car when I was little. I think I was maybe four or five years old. I was hit by a car, fractured skull, went to the hospital, and there happened to be a little bit of money left over. They put it in escrow, and when I turned 21, it wound up being something like $3,700. Okay. I went and bought me a four-track and a 16-channel mixer and started recording, and that was in 1980. Uh, basically built up a studio from there, wrote some songs, um, hit Billboard Top 40 R&B a couple times with some songs in production. Wow! Yeah. How about and, you, man? Um, okay. Yeah, and and basically just uh, wrote, had a lot of people come through, met a lot of people, and for from 1980 to 1994, uh, had the recording studio going and did that. And so got out of that, decided, I, you know, I, I looked at the studio as being kind of like playing chess. Right. And then the road is kind of like playing speed chess. Okay. No rewind button. That's right. Got to happen right here, right now. So okay. I, I loved it. I just fell in love with being on the road. So hooked up with speech uh, of Arrested Development. We traveled, you know, over the States and went to uh, Amsterdam and Japan. That was my okay. first time going out. Guadalupe, some other places. And got out of that. And then the next thing I know, I was in local bands playing around town and 
quit that and quit on December 31st, 2001. And that was my last gig, New Year's Eve gig. Mm -hmm. And January 19th, I'd gotten hired with the SOS band. We played Chicago Theater with uh, the Gap Band and more stay in time. And okay. And you've been doing show. that ever since, huh? Ever since. So you've been, been making all your nickels in the entertainment business some form or another, Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I've always, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that, you know, I mean, that's yeah. uh, that is what the dream is. Amen. It is to be I mean, able to make a living, uh, you know, doing, doing, doing the stuff that yeah. you love. Now, the SOS band, I know we had to reschedule one of my shows because you guys were over in Europe. Yes. How many shows a year you figure you got to do with those guys? Uh, we probably do... On average, one we kind of weekend warriors, we okay. about maybe one a week, you know. So we do maybe 40, 50 shows a week. Okay. I mean, a month, a year. I'm sorry. Now, when was the last time the SOS band had a hit? Wow, their first hit was in 1980, and I would be willing to say that it was like the late 80s. Um, they had their last hit. They had maybe, I know they had one or two platinum records. I know they had platinum single, and then I think they had, I don't know. Uh, maybe about five gold records, wow. something like that. And they still pack them in? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, 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 sold, we sold out this, these last few gigs um, over in Europe. Yeah, we had, three, we had four shows. Three of them were sold out. Well, music fans getting older is a beautiful thing. It, right. uh, it really is. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the work you do here on the show. I look forward to working with you again next year. Dude, you are a genius, man. I, 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 I just never know what's going to come out of your mouth every week. So I just, I just can't wait for you. <laughs> There, I told you. Yeah. I did. Okay. All right, everybody. Yeah, Al Burroughs will we'll, we'll be right back. He does pay. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you got me. Oh, you want the money back? <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> well, you already said it. Oh, I told you I'd give it to him. I didn't oh, say oh, you could keep oh, it. Oh, okay. so. Luckily, I got my mouth over here. So we'll, we'll be back. Al Burroughs, everybody. Yeah, he said I was a genius, but remember, he had a fractured skull and a car wreck. There so, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Chris Massey from The Chris Massey Show. You know, one of my favorite places to hang out, eat, and play music is the Moonshine Tavern in Tucker, Georgia. Moonshine Tavern, they got great food, great drink, and great live music five nights a week. Right now at the Moonshine Saloon, you can go and get five appetizers for five bucks, five bucks each. That's right, five appetizers for $25. So just go down there and get them. Hell, those appetizers, man, that's a whole meal in itself. I'm joined by Leon Smoker. Leon, Leon, where's your Santa hat? I told you, man, I'm not wearing this stupid hat. All it right. takes me a long time to get my hair ready, and then they want me to wear a hat. So uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that tonight. Sorry. All right. All right. Whatever. Okay. okay. So tonight we're reviewing the 1990 Deaf American release of Shake Your Money Maker by the Atlanta rock band The Black Crows. The album made it all the way to number four on the Billboard charts and had three singles, Jealous Again, Hard to Handle, and She Talks to Angels, crack the Billboard Top 100. The album received great reviews and was an instant success. The album landed the band on The Jay Leno Show, David Letterman, and Saturday Night Live. The album was followed by the, uh, by the, su by the Southern Harmony and Musical Companion LP, which made it all the way to number one. As of today, the Black Crows have sold over 30 million records. Okay, Leon, so we feel bad. You didn't get your own show. So we picked a record, you thought you might like it. Well, this is much better than the horse shit y'all been feeding me all year. I'll, I'll, get, I'll give you that, okay? All right, well, it's the last show, so at least, you know, make it a good one. You want me to do the review now? Yeah, go ahead. Do the okay. Well, there have been a lot of great albums come out of the state of Georgia. You know, uh, the uh, Allman Brothers Live at the Fillmore, many would say, probably is the best record from a band to come out of this state. But for my money, no pun intended, I would say Shake Your Money Maker by the Black Crows is my favorite record to come out of the state of Georgia. I mean, look, man, this is the album that the Rolling Stones have been trying to cut since Tattoo You in 1981. And vocalist Chris Robinson, man, he's such a great singer. Humble Pie singer Steve Marriott rolled over in his grave and he actually smiled, man. Can you believe that? <laughs> the album kicks butt from track one to track ten. Now... I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't know Rich Robinson, and I don't know Chris Robinson. I do know people that have met Chris Robinson, and many of them say that the guy's an asshole. But 
I don't care. If you can sing like that, as far as I'm concerned, you've got a right to be an asshole. You know what I'm saying? If I was put on a deserted island and I had a stereo there and I could take 10 records with me, Shake Your Money Maker would be one of them. Oh, and by the way, if I could take 10 chicks with me, Chris Robinson's ex-wife, Kate Hudson, would be somebody I'd take with me too. So you can say that I'm a fan from every single angle on this record. Leon, we finally give you a record you like and you call the singer an asshole? No, I didn't call him an asshole. I said I know people that had said he was an asshole. You know, this is why you didn't get your own show, because you don't think before you say anything. Well, last week it was because I smoked too much weed. So which one is it? Does it really matter? Well, yeah, it matters, man. I mean, how am I supposed to improve myself if I don't know what the problem is? You know what? I give up. Just take us out. Join us next time when Rachel will be doing her own show without me. Merry Christmas, Rachel. Merry Christmas, Leon. Until then, I'm Leon Smoker. And I'm Rachel Jordan. See, See you, you next time. Are you looking for a great night out? Are you in the Atlanta, Georgia area? Are you looking to check out some live, awesome music during the week? They have keto, poker tournaments, horseshoes, and special events. It's all at the Moon Shadow Tavern. That's at 3976 Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker, Georgia. That's the Moon Shadow Tavern. Give them a call, 770-674-2133. Check out their selection of great food, friendly service. Visit their website at msttucker.com. That's www.msttucker.com. Moon Shadow Tavern is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on www.americanheartsradio.com. Make sure you told them that American Hearts Radio sent you. Visit their website, check out their great selection of food, appetizers, wings, burgers, sandwiches and wraps, steaks and chicken, salads and sides. Also their drink specials. Live music during the week. Check them out. Give them a call. 770-674-2133. I was glad to see that Leon Smoker was behaving himself on the show. He got kind of out of hand last week. So, uh, Leon, maybe we'll, you know, if we can't get you a show, I'll let you keep coming on my show. You know, I don't care if you do smoke weed. Anyway. All right. For being a guest on the Chris Massey Show tonight, my guests Al Burles and Jimmy James will both receive a six-month supply of Rice the San Francisco treat, and a case of turtle wax. Yeah, that's right. Just see Ray, the security guard, downstairs, and he will set you up with your door prizes. Now, my next guest I met way back in 1986. We were both working this bar called Quincy's over on Shaman Tucker Road. He was in a band called The Shifters, and I was in a band called The Moonlighters, and we were sharing the house gig there for the summer of 1986. And let me tell you what, that's one summer I will never forget. He's a fine bass player, plays in a band called Who's Rollin'. He's done some shows with the Chris Massey Band, and he's an excellent sound man. He's ran sound for people like Loretta Lynn. Charlie Daniels, The Black Crows, Collective Soul, and David Allen Coe. Would you please welcome to the Chris Massey Show my good friend, Mr. Jimmy James. Jimmy, come on in, brother. I got a cowboy. All right. So now... Jimmy, when we when we first met, we were we were playing that bar at, at Quincy's, and um, uh, you know, on any night when we were playing in there, somebody could have somebody could have went to jail. <laughs> oh, I think somebody did. Play. Somebody somebody could have went to jail and stayed. I mean, there was a uh, there was underage drinking going on in there. There was there was there was drugs everywhere, and uh, and we were playing. And uh, I think I uh, I tallied up one time. The Moonlighters did 46 gigs that year at, uh, at, uh, at Quincy's, which means you guys had to probably do 60. Yeah, yeah, we, you know? yeah we played a few more, that's for sure. Yeah, it, uh, it was a great time, and, you know, and I've got, uh, I've got uh, life, uh, friends that I've been friends with ever since then, you know, Mike Register and, and, uh, and, and Toehead and Jimmy Demas and Scott Sutton and Dave Johnson. I just did a gig. Uh, CMB did a gig with Tom Hill over at the Claremont Hotel, and uh, Dave was back there playing drums. And in fact, we were backstage talking about Quincy's about uh, 
But uh, that's uh, that's where I met you, and you were just getting started in the uh, music business at yep, that time. Sure you, you know, you were playing bass, and uh, and you were kind of the sound guy in there. So, uh, so tell me how it is you got interested in uh, in, in running sound, and uh, and because uh, I know you've uh, you've done an awful lot of it. Yeah, right around that time, um, started uh, running sound for a band called the Clams. Yeah. And those, which was Mike Register's band. That's right. And That's we went right. around a lot to Georgia Tech, up mm -hmm. to Athens, did a lot of shows up there, up to the Citadel. Okay. We kind of traveled the whole Southeast uh, doing a lot of shows with those guys. Mm -hmm. And So you kind of cut your teeth with them? Cut my teeth with them. And then um, in 89, brought into the rec room. And my partners, Jeff Owsler, Danny Hamilton, and Phil Bush. Okay. We got that venue going real good. Had a whole bunch of bands play there, a bunch of national acts. Now, the rec room was a major player in the music scene. Oh, yeah. In the early 90s. And uh, uh, some bands that have gone on to be very famous played there. Can you name oh, a, few, yeah. a few of those for me? Uh, yeah, let's see. The um, Crawl Space used to play there, and they turned out to be Seven Dust. Okay. Which is a pretty big band. And um, How about the guys from Collective Soul? Yeah, they, they were uh, marching two-step that mm -hmm. played there a lot, and they became uh, Collective Soul after that. Wow, okay. And um, there, there was just so many bands that we had running through there. We were running... And on any given night, we could have 10 to 15 bands playing. And you had uh, guys from Blackberry Smoke played in there, too, did they? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, a couple of the guys that were in Blackberry Smoke played in a band called Nihilist. Okay. Right. And uh, they were a heavy band. But, yeah, we had all kinds of music playing in there. Okay. Now, you told me this story, and we've got, and we've got to talk about this. Um, you were telling me that uh, in 1992 that um, uh, they were shooting a scene for the movie Free Jack. Oh, which 93. 93. Yeah. Shooting a scene for the movie Free Jack behind the, the rec room, and this movie had Emilio Estevez, uh, Mick Jagger. Was Renee Russo in this movie? Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon uh, was in this movie. And um, the crew sees you out there, and uh, they come up and make you an offer. Why don't you tell me, uh, tell me what that was? Well, they wanted to do a wrap-up party for the movie, and uh, they were asking us if we could get a, a party band together and go have a big party over at Mick's house. So Mick Jagger had rented a mansion in Buckhead for the time of the shooting, yeah. and he's kind of having the rap party at his house, yeah. and you're booking the band, and you're running the sound over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, had, uh, we had Cool Joe play, and um, it, was, it was a great party. It was a lot of fun, met a lot of cool people, and uh, Mick was really nice. Yeah, so earth. tell me, what is, what, is, uh, what is Mick Jagger like? You know? he, he was totally cool, just really down to earth guy. Um, I thought he would look a little older than he was from, right. all, from all his road miles, but yeah, mm -hmm. he was. He looked real good, and he was just really, he was just really nice guy, really nice guy. He went and got his camera down and uh, interviewed me and Danny Hamilton for a while, and he was oh, just wow. really cool. He was really cool. Okay, so the rec room. Uh you guys kind of get a raw deal when the Olympics come around. They decide that they're going to shut the venue down. Is that correct? Yeah, we basically uh, lost our lease. Um, the lady that owned the place, she had passed away and left it to one of her brother-in-laws or sons or something. And uh, he wound up kicking us out when the Olympics came. He thought he was just going to make millions down there. And well, how, uh, how many years did you guys have that place? We had it for seven years. That's a good run. Yeah, it was. A I good mean, run. that's a good run. The six eighty eight was was uh, was open seven years. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that that that's a good run. A good run for a rock club. And I know a lot of people that are now probably in their forties and um and and fifties uh, have a lot of great memories of, of of being in that club, man. And that's really cool to be part of uh, somebody's past like that. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. To have, have yeah, a place where people, people went. today that come up and say, "Hey, man, I remember you from the rec room." And right. You know. Had, a, had all kinds of bands play there. Now, and you were telling me uh, some of the people that you've ran sound with. I know you told me that you uh, that you ran sound for uh, Loretta Lynn mm -hmm. at uh, Lanier uh, Lanierland, right? Yep. And, uh, and, and and this is the and this is the kind of story that singers don't ever want to hear. Okay, uh, Loretta Lynn, <laughs> you've got all this stuff set up, and she comes out and tells you that she doesn't need any of the monitors. Yep. None of them. None of them. She didn't want any monitors Unbelievable. on Unbelievable. And she probably didn't miss a note all night. Oh, no. She <laughs> sang like an angel. It was absolutely unbelievable. See, that's not fair that people can actually sing without monitors. I mean, you know, that's just, that's, that, that, that's just, that's, but, you know, she probably uh, grew up uh, playing honky-tonks and stuff. Oh, yeah. Where there were no monitors. Yeah, I did, I did a bunch of cool gigs with uh, Matthew DiBenedetto, 
Uh, he taught me a lot about running sound, mm -hmm. and uh, he owned Rain Productions at the time. So yeah, we we did a bunch of really cool shows with him, a bunch of national acts. So yeah, it was okay. a real good learning experience. So in 2004, I had uh, gotten divorced, and I had moved back to Atlanta, and I had been out of the music business for about 15 years. And uh, I put together a band, and um, you know, one of the coolest things about that was I was able to call you. You were running sound at the Great Watering Hole, and you said, yeah, man, bring it on down. Let's see what you got. And I was able to get right back in the scene uh, really quick. And I don't know if I ever told you, but I really appreciate you being there for me for that because uh, basically, I mean, I was having to start all over again. Right. Was start, that with the Hellcats? That was with the Hellcats. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it was. I remember that. And uh, we, we came down there, and, and, uh, and, and that has grown on to be uh, what is the uh, Chris Master Band now. You know, all, that, that all got started there, and we used to come down there and play. And so you... Uh, you were kind of like the bar manager at uh, in, in that part of the uh, watering hole for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we had a lot of bands running through there. I've been running sound for bands ever since the early 80s. Okay. And I'm still running sound for bands. Including, How many shows do you think you've done? Oh, uh, over 10,000, easy. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of rock and roll. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, my ears are still ringing. And I'm sure not all of it was good. <laughs> oh, most of them were, including you, Chris. <laughs> Now, um, uh, you uh, you uh, later on you had a band called Who's Rolling right. that you still play with, yep. and, and you've had several people in the band, Bruce Blick, Tom Hill, and at one time, I mean, man, you guys were doing about 60, 65 shows a year, all local, right? Yeah, we were doing a whole lot. When Tom Hill was in the band, we were playing three and four or five nights a week. It just it just all depends, but yeah, it's kind of slowed down a little bit now. Right. We have a new drummer, um, Billy Johnson. Right. And Billy, former drummer of the Chris Massey Band. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we're playing this Saturday. That's right. With That's you right. guys. That's uh, right. The Mistakes. That is correct. Iconic punk rock band. Yeah, but those Atlanta. of you that don't know, this Saturday night at the Moonshadda Tavern, uh, the band that I got, it all got started in. Way back in 1980, I was lead singer for a punk rock group called The Mistakes. Uh, we performed at the Agora Ballroom and the 688 regularly, the Bistro and all the clubs in the scene back then. And, uh, you know, for some reason, uh, people still come out and see this band, and we enjoy doing it. And uh, we're going to be there this Saturday night with Who's Rolling. You guys are going to be running sound and, and opening up the show. So it should be a, should be a good time. So uh, have you gotten uh, you used to have a lot of sound equipment. Is it gone now? or? I still have a couple systems left, but, yeah, I had about a half a dozen sound systems that I used to have, and I'd rent out to here and there and had a couple venues that I had them rented out for all the time. But, okay. yeah, I kind of dwindled down a little bit, and uh, me and Tom Delatore, we pretty much take care of all that now. Okay. Well, you guys, uh, whenever we can, we get you guys to run a uh, sound for the Chris Massey Band, and you always do a jam-up job. You know, I wish I could take you on the road with me one day. It'd be a, a lot less headache for me. Jimmy, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Chris. Jimmy thank James, you. everybody. We'll be right back. Calvary Gutter Services, LLC, provides quality service to our customers. We are committed to excellence and offer a two-year warranty on all workmanship and a lifetime clog-free warranty on all gutter cover systems. We are fully insured for your protection. We are experts in copper and half-round gutter systems, which are offered in sizes ranging from 6 inches to 8 inches. Full soffit and fascia systems can be replaced as we install gutters to avoid wood rot and ensure a job well done. Proudly offer Magnolia Under Deck Systems. We ensure that you are happy with the service we provide. If you need a pro, call us. 678-389-7945. That's 678-389-7945. Calvary Gutter Services. Find us on the web at www.gutteratlanta.org. All right, we're back, we're back. Well, Rachel, we made it through the first season, mm -hmm. 16 shows, and I uh, can't tell you how much I enjoy having you on the show because you, uh, you interview uh, Leon Smoker and um, Muhammad Azar, which uh, I don't like either one of those guys, and I really <laughs> appreciate you uh, taking care of that, you know. Um, now, why don't you tell the good people out there in Web TV land what is going to be coming up on January the 14th here on the American Hearts Radio Network? Yep, so January 14th will be the first episode of my show, College Confidential. Um, so I think it's going to be pretty good. I hope so. Yeah. I, th I, think, I think you're going to do well with it. 
you certainly had some excellent training here on the uh, on, on the Chris Massey show. I mean, and, uh, if you can interview Leon Smoker, you can interview that, anybody. That's right. That's right. I doubt you're going to have anybody <laughs> that's, uh, that's that high and, uh, and that rude and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, we want to wish <laughs> everybody happy holidays. You know, because we like to piss everybody off any chance we get, you know. And uh, I'll be back on January the 19th for the first show of Season 2. I don't know who the guests are. Here are some of the people that we uh, hope to have on the show next year. Uh, uh, representatives from the Atlanta Falcon Cheerleaders. Uh, we hope to have Bruce Hampton on the show. Um, Glenn Phillips. Uh, Ray Strickland uh, from the Gasoline Brothers. And um, anybody else that uh, comes to mind, uh, 24 shows next year. We're really looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Al, good job as always. Yes, sir. And remember, always love your woman. Take life as it comes and say it with me. When you get the, the chance, chance, have too much fun. fun. We'll see you next year. Yeah.